Yo, yo, what's up everyone? This is Kantanaka Wish for Fish, giving you tips, bringing you on adventures, and taking you to the stream. It's almost that time of year again, and I'm talking about Showtime. That's the fly fishing show, and I'll be at Denver, Edison, as well as Atlanta, so come by my booth and say hello. Speaking of that time of year, it's redfish time. And next month, I'm gonna be down in Texas with Colton Schofield, Chase and Reds, as well as Carp and Largemouth, so stay tuned for those videos. Many of you have seen me fish with Colton on the Henry Fork. If you haven't seen that video already, you could click the link above. But now he's gonna be in Texas for the winners. You could book him right now at texasbigs.com. Today, I'm gonna be showcasing a fly that I'm gonna to be using to chase those redfish and the feature tire is Chris Cease from Not The Real World. I'll see you on the water. Hey guys, it's Chris Cease with Not The Real World Fly Fishing. You can find me at www.notthereworld.com. Today I'm going to be tying a redfish wiggler, which is a very effective redfish fat that imitates shrimp and also kind of acts like a spoon. Uh, this can be used anywhere in the country that redfish are found. So the key to this is to first shape the hook. This is a Mastod size one, 34011, which is a long shank stainless steel hook. You want to shape this so it's got a curvature to it. And there's a very easy way to do it with three simple bends. I'm going to show you utilizing my vise and some pliers. First things first, I like to take about a third of the way down, put it back in my vise. I'm going to go ahead and use my finger to pull it back towards me. Just go a little further. Pull it back towards me at about a 45 degree angle. So it's gonna look like that. The next step, I'm gonna go nearly all the way to the bends, put it back in my vise, and pull it again towards me just a little bit to kind of give it another rounded spot on it, like so. Finally, I'm gonna go ahead and take my pliers I've got here, and I'm gonna bend open the shank a little bit so that the eye matches up nearly in line with the hook point. I'm gonna go ahead and just take your standard thread. This is 210 denier, flat wax, nylon, whatever you wanna use, um, three aught, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the shank. And I'm gonna run it all the way down to where it really starts to get a good bend. I'm gonna go ahead and take some Krennic, and I'm tying this one in gold, so we're gonna use gold. Um, this is a really great amount to use here. It's about half the width of a pencil, and you're actually gonna double it over, so it's about twice what you think it's gonna be. So we'll tie in our tail here, and again, we're gonna double this over, so whatever you want it to be, use about half the amount. But a pretty good amount is good. We want this to look like a, uh, a spoon, so it's gonna be a lot of flash in there. Fold it over and tie. And then what our next step is going to be is to go ahead and take Palmer chenille and polar chenille, UV polar chenille. The Palmer chenille is in tan, the polar chenille is in gold, and we're going to marry them together to create our collar. We'll go ahead and tie them in on top of the shank, wrap it down. Got a little bit of excess there that I'm gonna trim off. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over because I want to install some eyes that I made from mono. I took 40 pound monofilament, what I did was burn the ends and then I coated it in UV as well as then blackened it with a marker and then coated it UV again. Make some really realistic eyes. There's a V there that you can see. What I want this V to do is to display outside of the hook points create a little bit of a help in keeping weeds off of this hook point. So you want to set that V of these eyes onto the shank and then go ahead and X cross this on. It's going to be just about at the point on the shank when you go straight down. What I'll also do is take some crazy brushable super glue, brush that in to lock them up. Flip this fly back over. If you're using a Full uh, rotational vise, of course, you just spin it. We're gonna go ahead and take this material. And we're gonna take these two different chenilles, and we're gonna go ahead and just spin them together using your fingers. You kinda wanna stroke the fibers down every couple spins, make sure you're getting it out, just like that. You can also take a dubbing brush. Kind of brush it out. 
I'm using a 12 gauge shotgun cleaner, which is a great tool to use for dubbing. And then we're gonna go ahead and wrap around the eyes. Kind of want to make sure you pull this material out, don't let it get wrapped up under itself. And you're probably gonna wrap around it five, six, maybe seven times to get a nice thick collar here. Good right there, I'm gonna go ahead and tie it off. Then we're gonna clip off our excess. Go ahead and tie down that little tag end. And then I'm going to take this brush again and kind of brush this out, make sure I get all these fibers out. And then make sure I pick all this material out. Go ahead and flip back over. There's a lot of flipping in this fly, unfortunately. Go ahead and just wrap back on this collar just a little bit further to whatever you're comfortable with. I kind of like to go almost to the eyes, maybe an eighth of an inch off them. Next, you're going to go ahead and take some 40 pound mono. 30 will work, 50 will also work, depending on how wide you want the fly. Cut a couple inches off a spool that you might have. That's long. You go ahead and you're going to create a little loop like this and pinch it, kink it. What you are trying to do here is to tie this in on the sides of the shank to create a wider profile on this fly from the bottom side or the top side looking down or up. What I'm going to do is go ahead and take the pinched ends, lay it right there at the base, and kind of give me some loose wraps so I can get this thing set. Just going to go loose wraps, kind of work down the shank here. Go all the way nearly to the eye. I'm actually going to rotate this hook up so it's kind of easy for me to tie here at the end. I'm going to make sure you get it set right so it's flat and then you can wrap down tight. I'm just making this a little bit wider of a body. A lot of good wrapping over it. Make sure it's nice and tight. You go ahead and clip this excess off there towards the eye. You go back up towards the collar area you started at. What we're going to do next is take some lead. I'm using 0.03. Get a couple inches. If you want to make this thing sink a lot, you can use more, obviously, to make it sink less. But I want at least a couple inches. And what we're going to do is put it right there at the top of this bend of this quote unquote rainbow on this hook that we've created here. Right in the middle, because you want that to be the heaviest part of the fly as it sinks, right in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it on. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is take some gold estaz. And this is a metallic version, so it's really sparkly, kind of like a spoon. We go ahead and tie that in right there at the base of that collar. And I'm going to advance the thread through the thread, or through the lead, excuse me, all the way down towards the eyes. You saw right there I shifted the hook in the vise a little bit because I want to be tying off right there at the eye. I wanted to give me a, more of a flat surface, not completely flat. Uh, I like to use super glue on here to make this a tough fly. You can catch a lot of redfish on a single one. Just kind of coat it there. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is wrap this ice chenille or estaz and I'm stroking these fibers back just be careful with that super glue so your fingers don't get stuck to it wrap all the way down and you're just gonna wrap this tight against itself you want a tight body on this fly over the lid keep wrapping all the way towards the eye the tighter it is, the better it is. It's going to make more of a, a stiffer body, if you will, of these fibers so it operates properly in the water and wiggles, hence the name. So I've gone ahead, wrapped it all the way down, as you can see, tied off. Go ahead, clip off the excess. 
Take scissors. You don't have to have curved scissors. Curved scissors can help. Obviously, this is a curved fly. And you're going to clip the bottom completely flat against the material in the shin. All the way to the collar. So you're making it flat on the bottom and flat on the top. That's what makes it ride and kind of surf in the water. You want to leave the sides sticking out. That the, keeps the body nice and wide. Go ahead and flip this back over. Put it back in. This is where the curved scissors again help, but you don't have to have them. Go ahead and cut it right here in this curve. Again, flat on the top. And this flattened body makes it wiggle so nicely when you strip it. It doesn't fully rotate like a spoon, but it just kind of gives it a little bit of a motion like this. I'm gonna adjust the hook there. Make sure I got my thread set where I want. I'm gonna go ahead back to some of my 40 pound mono here. Gonna clip off two inches of it, an inch and a half. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use my pliers, flat part of my pliers to flatten it. On this end there, I don't know if you can see that with the camera, but I flatten it. Makes it a lot easier to tie in on this fly, the weed guard. You tie that end right in. We'll make sure it's sticking up properly. Then I'm gonna go ahead. Definitely want to have this weed guard up past the point, so I'm gonna leave it a little bit further and just cut it right there. And then you go ahead and whip finish. Okay, so one final step you can also do is to trim the tail length to whatever you like. I've got it about as twice the length of the body on there. What I do like to do on occasion, just to make it give it a little bit different action, is kind of trim this, the edges of this crinic, just to give it a little bit of a taper. A little bit of a pointed end there, if you will. Doesn't have to be a lot, you don't have to if you want, it's just kind of a personal preference of mine. Gives it a little bit more of a lifelike look in the water with that tapered edge. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a completed redfish wig. Here we go. What's up everyone? Thank you very much for watching. Please do go check out our website at wishforfish.com to keep up to date with what's going on with Wish for Fish, as well as get some killer discounts and check out the Wish for Fish store for some sweet merchandise. If you're on Facebook or Instagram or other forms of social media, give us a follow at Wish for Fish. Most importantly, if you haven't subscribed already, please do because we're constantly updating new footage all the time, so you can do so by clicking this right here. And if you're interested in seeing more, check out some of our other videos from this season's playlist. Thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the water.